All right, my name is Kathy Flanders, and today I want to talk a little bit about managing the stored grain insects with emphasis on wheat, because the wheat harvest is coming up way too fast. It may not seem like it right now, but um, it is important to start making some preparations and think about what you need to do in order to, to have a safe and effective storage of, of wheat if you decide to store your wheat. It doesn't matter if you've got a small grain bin like this, or if you've got a really big grain bin, the kind of the principles for managing stored grain are all the same. Your goal is going to be to minimize the number of insects that you start with, and then to make conditions within the grain bin unfavorable for the remaining insects to grow. That's the best you can do. You'll never prevent every single insect, but you have to do the best you can. So the fewer the number you start with, and then the unhappier that you can make them with the various growing conditions, the better off you are. One thing to remember is when you get into a situation where inside the grain bin, where you've got all your grain inside, uh, if you have insects in there, there is nothing that you can spray on top to get rid of the, the insects that are there present throughout the grain bin. The only way to really get rid, thoroughly get rid of the insects that are in the grain bin you would have to fumigate. And so uh, that can be dangerous and it can be time consuming. And so our goal really is to do everything we can to sort of minimize the, the number of insects that we have. The principles that we have kind of boil down into keeping it clean and dry, keeping it cool, and checking it often. Keeping it clean, keeping it dry, and keeping it cool are all designed towards um, making the grain bins an unfavorable environment for insects to grow. So let me try to explain what some of these, why we're saying these and, and, and what it means and what we're doing by doing these different things. So why do we want to keep it dry? The lower the grain percent moisture in the grain, the slower the insects reproduce. And so what this is, this is an old study from back in 1960, uh, where they had um, granary weevils that they put in wheat, and they left them at 80 degrees for five months. And uh, you can see that um, the, the number of insects that you have, uh, there were more insects that were, that were able to reproduce at 14% moisture uh, then we're able to reproduce at 9% moisture, for example. That's why for all the grains that we have, or if you look in my stored grain IPM guide, you're going to see some recommended moisture contents for storage of the different kinds of, 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 of grains and for soybeans as well. Generally, the longer you plan to store a product, the drier we recommend that you get that, get that grain. I recognize that it's a trade-off between uh, getting docked a little bit for the shrinkage when you go to sell it versus um, the uh, benefits you get when it's drier from not only insect control, but also from the control of molds. So keeping it dry is, is very important. Uh, look at those tables, understand that the longer you plan to store your grain, perhaps you need to be thinking about having it drier. Now, why are we talking about keeping it clean? Well, most of the grain, the insects that we have, uh, most of them are homegrown. There were a few that we fly infesting in the field or flying in to find your grain bin later. But a lot of those thing, problems that we have are from our own insects that are growing, that are right there on our stored grain facility, facility site. You may not realize that even without food, some of these stored grain beetles can live for several years as adults. And if you leave just a little bit of food, well, that's heaven for them, and they can spend the rest of the year. You take the grain out, but leave some grain like you see right here. If you don't clean that out right after you take your grain out, they're going to just be able to sit there and multiply in all of that leftover grain. And then all of a sudden, when you go to put new grain in, uh, you know, they just be sitting there waiting for the new crop to come in. So the cleaner you can be, the better. We recognize we do we are limited with some constraints that it's hard to clean all the nooks and crannies in a grain bin and things do fall down to the floor and we'll get down under the floor but the more cleaning we can do 
the fewer number of insects are going to be there to infest that grain and to start the new cycle. So we talk about not cleaning the grain bins and not just the grain bins, but make sure you clean the combines and the augers and any of the grain handling equipment. Uh, one of the great places where we can build up insects is like if in the tank of the combine, if instead of it's important to clean that out at the end of the season uh, and not just leave some grain in there to let the, the insects build up. So clean all of the grain handling equipment and the grain storage areas. That involves sweeping, vacuuming, power washing, whatever you can do depending on the piece of equipment uh, to, to just minimize the, the number of insects that are just sort of hanging out around the, the grain, the farm and the grain facility. Uh, try to get as best you can, this is an actual grain bin uh, that was cleaned out so you can hardly see a grain kernel in here and that, that's just really excellent. That needs to be everybody's goal. I know it's easier said than done, but this is, Super, super important. The sanitation that you can do is going to just pay off big time later on. Well, that cleaning is going to include going and making sure we clean on the outside. You don't want to have any grain uh, laying around on the outside. Like uh, this is an extension agent uh, that was able to find some kernels of uh, corn that had been laying around outside. The weeds, um, any excessive bits of equipment or pieces of it's tempting to just uh, lean something up against the grain bin and think I'll come back and pick up that piece of metal later. Uh, but, but you know, anywhere where the insects can harbor outside, uh, you just need to get rid of that. And so it's important to just keep the grain facility clean and uncluttered inside and out. Now, part of that keeping it clean involves applying an empty bin insecticide to kill any of the insects uh, that are there. Um, and this helps you and provides you a little bit of protection from anything that might be crawling up through the grain floor or uh, for whatever reason. So spray that, uh, insectic that insecticide, uh, Tempo SC Ultra is the most commonly uh, used, uh, inside the grain bin wearing the proper spray equipment and then go outside and spray it around the base of the grain bin and three feet up on the outside of the grain bin. And that's also gonna, gonna help uh, reduce the number of insects that we're starting with. So keeping it clean, everything we're doing with keeping it clean is designed to reduce, to, to minimize the number of insects that we're starting with. All right, so then as we're loading the grain into the bin, we've got it at the proper moisture content and um, we're loading it into the grain bin. Uh, grain protectant, an insecticide that is applied to the grain as it's being loaded into the bin, it gets distributed over most of the kernels is another layer that's designed to reduce the um, uh, number of insects that we have uh, and slow the buildup of the population within the bin. So applying an insecticide is not something, if you put it on, it's not something that's gonna last forever, but it will last for a while. Usually you get at least a month out of, the, out of control and sometimes, sometimes more. Uh, but uh, when we're thinking about storing wheat, we're really thinking about a month or two of control uh, from our, our grain protectant. But it's especially important to use a grain protectant when you're storing wheat. Storing corn, you may be able to get away without using a grain protectant, but storing wheat, it needs to be mandatory to put something on as you're putting it into the grain bin. We have several choices, and I want to point out we do have some new products this year that we can actually talk about. <clears throat> Soricide 2, which is a combination of a pyrethroid, delta methrin, and chlorpyrifosmethyl, which is an organophosphate, uh, has been the standard for years. Um, Sentinel was registered not too long ago. That's just the pyrethroid um, um, delta methrin. We recommend if you use that product, you tank mix it with an insect growth regulator called the Diacon IGR. Um, suddenly, we now have available uh, Diacon IGR Plus, which is a premix actually of the Sentinel and the Diacon IGR already mixed up for you. And coming very soon, if you look at the second one there on the list, uh, is an insecticide called Sensat. It's the active ingredient, which is spinosad. Um, that is going to be start, start being sold this spring, so you may be able to get hold of it this year or it may be something that to be looking for um, for next year if it's not available by the time we're harvesting our wheat this year. I want to show you just a few results to sort of show you how effective a grain protectant can be, and this is some data from uh, Dr. Michael Tays at the University of Georgia. 
Um, the slide is kind of busy here and it's from corn, but you get the same idea or the same um, effectiveness for some of these or the trends uh, in, in wheat as well. So uh, one thing that I just, just wanted to point out is that we want to keep the number of weevils or lesser grain borers that we have below two live weevils per kilogram, because above that is when the grain becomes officially infested and you start getting dockage problems uh, from, from having insects in the grain. Uh, one thing I want to point out is just to kind of follow through as time goes by, they started in October, here's December, February, April, and it went all the way to August. So it went through almost a year. Gradually what happens is the populations build up, uh, the, um, the weevils build up, and it's kind of hard when the grain temperatures are fairly cool here. I think that's why this is sort of showing that there weren't many insects present right there. Um, it's just because they weren't very active and didn't get in the trap. So I think that's kind of a sampling artifact. But if you look, we have more insects in that untreated uh, control. Um, generally looking here at the end of the season, you're also going to see that some of these insecticides, if you look at the IPM guide, say that you can spread them on the top, just put them as the top dress to kind of provide some protection. Using a top dress alone is is uh, doesn't really provide adequate production protection. You end up with that. You can end up with a lot of insects uh, uh, by the by the end of the storage period. Uh, what I'm getting at here is that effective um, grain protectants, and in here, store side two is not registered on corn. Actelic, which is perimifos methyl, is registered. That one um, execute is now what's being sold as Sensat. And then that combination um, that I talked about um, using the combination product, your Sentinel and your Diacon. Um, and then here it's just like using your um, Delta Mether and your Sentinel alone. So let's look at this one first, this bottom, this slow, lower diamond here. If you look, that one is not perfect, as we note here in this slide, as Dr. Tate's notes, it's not perfect, but it's better than doing nothing. So that's a relatively cost-effective treatment. Um, but it's, it's not going to provide you protection forever. You get greater protection from either using, in this case, the actelic on the corn or the um, Sensat, uh, the spinosad on the, uh, those great protectants are going to give you the best protection. The combination of the Sentinel plus the Diacon does a pretty nice job as well. So, so those are sort of the three best, best options there. So going back, just to remind you, I'm just going to go back. We've got these choices, um, store side two for wheat, uh, Sunset will be coming soon, and then the combination of going with your Delta Mithrin plus your Methabrine are going to provide you with your maximum control. And that's kind of what you need because it's in, insects grow well in, the, in our warm summers, and so uh, it's, good, it's good to have the best protection possible for our wheat and small grains. One caveat for Sensat is that if you look in the label, their tolerances may not be established in all the countries. And so it, use this, it says on the label, in the crops and commodities intended for use in the United States or that are going to a country that will accept this grain. So there's a little bit of a wrinkle there to just be aware of. Now, one more thing I want to say about using those grain protectants, as I said, it's very important, especially for growing wheat, uh, for storing wheat in the summertime or other small grains uh, to use those grain protectants. But if you have a grain dryer and the way your system works is that you're putting this grain in and the, while, it's, while it's hot from the dryer right into the grain bin, don't put the grain protectant on, um, as a, on that hot grain because it's going to break that protectant down. So it's kind of a trade-off. And you do kill a few insects by the drying process, particularly the higher the temperature is possible. Uh, but just know that uh, there's a little bit of a conflict between those two management techniques that if you've got hot grain that you're putting into the bin, don't try to put a protectant on it. So you need to be putting that on, on cool grain, those grain protectants. Okay, so that brings us to our next uh, management tactic, which is going to be to keep that grain as cool as possible. We want to keep the grain temperature below 60 degrees Fahrenheit whenever it is possible. The aeration fans, we can blow cool air through those grain bins, and it is uh, a great management tool. Why is this possible? 
Why does this work? Well, most of these star grain insect uh, problems, these star grain insects that we have are pretty cosmopolitan around the world and they tend to be from, from warmer areas and they just do not grow below 60 degrees. If you can kind of look at this little uh, schematic here, this is where we started out with a certain number of adult insects and stored them at three different temperatures for several months. And if you, if you look at this, you can see at 85 degrees, they were very fruitful and multiplied. Whereas uh, at 55 degrees, we were just left with those original adults. They were still alive, but they were, um, they had not reproduced. So keeping the grain below 60 degrees is a wonderful management tool. Easier said than done when you're in the south in the summertime, which is why it's such a challenge to store wheat. And why when you're storing wheat, you just gotta pull out all the bells and whistles. You really have to make sure that everything's clean, 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 clean. Uh, you put on your empty bin treatment, you put your grain protectant insecticide on your wheat, that's gonna give you your greatest chances of success because we don't have this keeping it cool tool that we have available for corn as we do for corn. Uh, lots of information about um, aeration can be found. Uh, we actually have a guide on our website that Dr. Ronald Noyce prepared for us for some stored grain workshops years ago, but it gives you some guidelines on, on, on the principles of aeration and some advice on aeration. If you go to alabamacrops.com and you click on stored grain, you will be able to find this publication a lot and a lot more information about uh, storing grain. It's easier to aerate if you have an automatic aeration controller on your grain bins. And it's even easier if you've got one of the fancy new grain bins with the thermocouples that are going up and down through the big grain bins that are constantly monitoring your temperature and moisture in your grain and that you have got these uh, computer systems that will turn the fans on and off as needed to maintain those optimal temperature conditions. This is actually just an actual example of uh, a bunch of the probes that were in a single grain bin uh, starting in October. You can kind of see how they ran those aeration fans were run and it kind of stepped that temperature down and it got that temperature until it was down below 60 degrees, which is where we wanted to maintain it for some safe grain storage. So um, these new computerized bin management systems make it a lot easier uh, to effectively use that aeration as a, as a management tool uh, for keeping your grain cool. It's important to know when you're running aeration fans uh, that it doesn't just do any good to just turn the fans on for a couple of hours um, a week or something like that. It takes, depending on the power of your fan, it can often take overnight or 24 hours uh, with our fans that most of the fans we have in the southeast are pretty powerful to kind of blow what we call that cooling front through the grain to kind of move all that cool air through the grain so it's important as you're aerating to if you don't have thermocouples to follow it up with uh, use, getting a grain thermometer in there and just taking a temperature knowing what that grain temperature is um, to make sure that your aeration is effective. Um, it can take days uh, with a, in the upper midwest they use some much weaker fans because it saves electricity but it can take three days for them to run the cooling front through a grain bin. So it's important to know the power of your fan and, and how long it takes to, um, to run that. But as I mentioned, a lot of that thinking is done for you with these new management, computerized management systems that you can buy with your, with your thermocouples in your grain bin. It's important, the last C that I had on there, we were keeping it clean and dry, we were keeping it cool, and then the last C was to um, check it often. That means monthly. Uh, generally, these uh, generation time for these insects is about a month, which is why you want to be checking it at least monthly uh, to see what kind of insects are there. There are different ways to do some checking. Uh, one is to use these little pitfall traps that are called StoreGuard WB Pro 2s. Uh, you can get them from tressa.com. Uh, it costs about $28, I think, the last I checked for a set of three. We recommend you put three to five in a grain bin, in each grain bin, leave them for a day, come back, um, look to see, it, they're these little pitfall traps, so when you, when you set them up, you drive them into the grain vertically down until you can't see them anymore except the very top. And uh, you come back and you get them in a, after a day, and then the insects that were crawling through the grain bin will, will fall through the little holes and will, 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 be, will be trapped. And you can kind of see what is out there crawling around in your grain bin. 
Um, we also have, I don't know if I have a picture, I don't, um, the old fashioned big grain probes that you can drive down into the grain and you can open them up and you can get a sample of the grain that then you can run through a sieve or a colander or an official grain sieve uh, to kind of shake it out and kind of see what insects are in there with, with the grain. Um, insects are fairly small relative to the size of the grain, so if you ever open up your grain bin and you look in and you can see insects crawling around, you are in big trouble at that point. So, um, but anyway, um, another thing that people do, because you can't, with all these things, you're poking around in the top of the grain bin, you really can't see what's happening at the bottom, and the bottom with that bin, kind of that bin sweep area, can be where we often have problems because of the insects that have been that we didn't get at through the cleaning and the spraying and all that, that maybe some that were harbored under the floor or something like that. So some people will unload some grain, uh, try to get, get some of that grain out to take a look and sort of see what, 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 what that grain looks like. Uh, but checking it is very, very important. But it's also very important to understand what a dangerous environment a grain bin can be. Make sure you have a safety harness on when you're in there messing around, sticking traps in or probing around in the grain area. Make sure someone knows you're in that bin. Uh, just take all the precautions necessary uh, in terms of grain bin safety. Um, but checking it often is very important. This is just an example to show when we were talking about that every 30 days, because every 30 days in the summertime, you get about a generation of these insects. This is a particular insect called the lesser grain borer. On the left hand side, you're going to see it says number of insects for 15 trap days. Well, that means that I took my, I had five of those little probe traps that I showed you and I stuck them in and left them for three days. Five times three was 15. Uh, then you can kind of see that we put this uh, grain in. This didn't have a protectant on it. And uh, this one in particular, you can sort of see that we got through the first couple of sample periods, okay, and then between July and looked like in early August or mid-August, we started uh, being able to detect insects and look what happened one month later, how rapidly that population had increased because of, uh, you know, each generation they're, they're just building up and so their growth is basically happening exponentially at this point. So another month, this would have gone even further up, uh, but what happened is we actually fumigated at that point. Um, so when the population went down. But uh, it can, you can use these traps to kind of get a signal of what's happening in your grain bin and, and find problems before they get to be economic problems. Another thing that you could do uh, if you saw you were starting to build up, it might be mean that that's the time you maybe want to market this a little bit earlier than you'd planned. But uh, if you're monitoring, if you're out there, it allows you to be more proactive uh, than just not knowing what's going on until it's time to sell the grain and you go out and then you find you've got bugs in it. So um, monitoring is a good idea. So keeping it clean and dry, keeping it cool, and checking it often are our main uh, recommendations. As I mentioned, be sure you're safe when you're out there. Wear that safety harness. Make sure people are out there know that you're out there in that grain bin. Be careful on those ladders. If you're building, thinking about building bins, uh, think about grow, building ones with a nice spiral staircase. They're not that much more in the general scheme of things when you're putting in a big grain system and they're a lot more pleasant to go up and down on than these great, these uh, vertical ladders. Now, if you end up with insects in your grain and it's, and it's necessary uh, that, you can, that you get rid of the insects, the live insects within your, your grain, the only thing we really have left to do is to fumigate with aluminum phosphide might be possible if you have the capability to move your bin, grain from one bin to another to uh, retreat it with a grain protective as you go through. But a lot of the, a couple of the worst pest insects that we have are developing kind of inside those kernels and you may not be controlling those as you're doing that movement uh, from, from bin to bin. So um, mainly what we, the thing to do when people find too many insects in their grain bin and they have to get rid of them is they're going to have to fumigate. So um, aluminum phosphide is a very dangerous product, unfortunately. It needs to be treated with respect. Uh, lots of times people uh, get their hands on it and used it improperly, and then we get unfortunate headlines at this where we have this toxic gas that killed four children. So I uh, always have to be cognizant of using and respecting this particular chemical. Here was another one. 
that one that I just showed you was, was from just last year at Christmas time. Uh, here we had one from 2007. So unfortunately, these headlines happen. People, you really need to be careful if you're using this product. You need to be aware of the properties of aluminum phosphide that are going to affect safety and efficacy. You need to be sure you read that applicator's manual, make a fumigation management plan, and keep it on file. You have to, I should have put in here also, you need to be sure that you seal your bin. Uh, if you don't seal your bin, you're just throwing your money away and getting an incomplete fumigation. So there's just a lot involved with this. So it's better to rely on these other practices that we're doing to minimize the number of insects we have by keeping it clean and dry, keeping it cool, and checking it often, and using fumigation as a last resort. Um, this is this uh, showing the alabamacrops.com website. Uh, if you click on stored grains on there on the left hand side, there'll be lots of information about stored grain. You can also access that stored grain IPM guide by clicking on the IPM weed and pests up at the, on the upper left there and then clicking on stored grain. You'll get right to the stored grain IPM guide, which has all these different insecticides uh, labeled. Uh, that, that are labeled a list of provides some tips on, on, on managing your stored grain.